Okay, welcome everybody back to Steve Talks Boxing X, XTBX, uh, where we talk real boxing with real uh, fight fans out there, real boxing fans. And this week's show, it's an uh, all-female weekend. We're talking about Rihanna Dixon, Terry Harper, Sandy Ryan, Michaela Mayer. And I'm pleased to be joining me is Tom Burke. Thank you, Tom. Thanks for coming back on. Yeah, thanks for having me, Steve. Third appearance. Uh, Third appearance. That's good, isn't it, really? So, if this was soccer M, I'd get like a hat trick. <laughs> yeah, hat trick ball. So yeah. I'll, I'll have a hat trick glove signed <laughs> by someone. That'll do. You're honoured. Free time on STBX, Tom. Thank okay. you. Round of applause there. <laughs> First question for you. Matchroom comes Saturday. Do we actually have a fight with them guys? Well, yeah, obviously this has been a bit of a tainted um, card. You, you sometimes get this now and then. Um, I seem to remember Frank Warren was having a rotten bit of luck a few years ago where it seemed to be just like loads of cards. Boxer as well. I think last year Boxer had loads of um, grief with various fights falling through. And, yeah, it just seems to be that Matt Trumer having it. It's part and yeah. parcel of the sport. I mean, you know, you know, they are, we talk about fighters and it takes, you know, two months for them to get ready for an event. And, you know, you think about what boxing actually is, the the trauma it puts on the body. Of course, you're going to get examples like this. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's just yeah, do, part do of think, it, it, Yeah, I was just going to say, matching is going through that bad run of bad luck, basically. It just, you know, it, it happens to it happens to a, it can happen to any fighter, it can happen to any promoter. So, yeah, it's just one of those things. Yeah. You have to, fair play to him. I will say this, fair play to him for... Um, getting the card actually out there because, you know, they've got a few prospects on there. They've got Galal Yafai, who looks like he's having a bit of a tune-up. And obviously, you know, there is a world title fight on there. And yeah. I think they've done the right thing um, changing the venue. So, obviously, the original card with Dolan Smith mm -hmm. uh, was going to be at Sheffield Arena, which mm -hmm. is um, a fairly, you know, sit seats over 10,000. So, it's a fairly big arena. They've now moved it. Obviously, it was down back down south. With yeah, Johnny I was gonna say, we had Johnny Fisher at the Copper yes. Bosh <laughs> there, yes. and then obviously that, and then now we're back back again, ain't we? So yeah, so just mm -hmm. a bit of context. So where where they're fighting now mm -hmm. is the Cannon Medical Arena, which okay, they actually have a show on Friday night, which is the JBM show. Yeah, um, with Shaquille Thompson um, headlining that card. Um, and they've done a few shows there now, JBM, and it's a good little venue. So the venue itself is, it's the home of the um, Sheffield Sharks, which are Sheffield's basketball team. Okay. It's it's a purpose-built basketball arena. Okay. Um, it's not it's not huge as you'd expect a British basketball yeah. arena to be, but it is it it does suit boxing really. It's got a couple of decent sized stands. Yeah, do you know how how big it is, Tom? Actually, off the top of your yeah, head. I, top, well, off top of yeah. my head, it'll hold about two or three thousand. Okay, yeah, okay. I, I'd say somewhere, I'd say two and a half. Let's just go in the yeah. middle. Okay. But it, it's not, it's not, it's not huge, but it does create a good atmosphere, and it, yeah. it's a fairly new um, facility. The facilities are good. It's a nice, clean, like nice little sports arena. So, you know, there, there'll there'll be two good shows there this weekend. I'm hoping to yeah. get down to both of them. Oh, good. Um, we'll see. Um, good. Yeah, did that, you, that's, that's the plan. I was say, did, did you feel sorry for you know Terry Harper, Rhiannon Dixon as, as well at the same time? You know, obviously that they've been moved about a bit as well. So the, the preparation leading up to it, did you feel feel for them a bit? Uh, yeah, obviously it can't be ideal for them. Um, mm. You know, <clears throat> uncertainty over fight dates. You know, you've put money and time into a camp. Um, and like I say, you've, I think you've got a credit match room, credit Eddie and all the team there for actually being a bit flexible, yeah. thinking outside the box um, and keeping keeping the show on. Because like I say, it's 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 not just, it's obviously a world title fight, which is important for women's boxing. Mm -hmm. but it's all those um, prospects on the undercard getting yeah. Galal uh, run out. Yeah. Before. Well, well, they need pain as well, don't they? You know, they only get paid... And they fight, so they need to fight basically as well. So you're not letting down the main event; you're letting down all the undercard fighters as well. That are paid day there as well. Absolutely. So yeah, yeah, I'm pleased. I'm pleased they managed to do it. And, and like I said, it's a double head of of world female uh, title fight. So it's, it's brilliant uh, as respect. 
With regards to female boxing, how far do you think it's come over recent years, uh, Tom? Yeah, I mean, we've had some great events over the last few years. Um, speaking of one of the fighters that was on, you know, that women's night of boxing that um, mm -hmm. Sky and Ben Shalom did uh, was that a couple of years ago now, or maybe a year and a half, I'm not sure, can't quite remember. But, you know, with Michaela Mayer being on that, that was a huge night for women's boxing. And that yeah. was that was really good. And you could see in the crowd, it was a different kind of crowd. Yeah. Um, you know, for, for example, another one that we've seen, Katie Taylor at MSG. Yeah. Just a huge event um, for, for boxing, not just women's boxing. And we are getting to that point now where we, we don't really feel the need to mention, oh, it's women's boxing. You yeah. know, this is just good boxing. It's and just that's... people boxing them. Yeah. 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 And, you know, I, I, I agree. So, that. yeah, forgive me if I introduced it as <laughs> female boxing. No, no, no. Right. Every, you, you do, don't you? But it's yeah. it, mm -hmm. almost like a few years ago, it was becoming like, it was like a caveat. Oh, mm -hmm. it's a good fight for the women. Yeah. Um, and it took, it seemed to take the men, you've seen on Twitter and stuff. Yeah. It seemed to take the men yeah. a little bit of time to get used yeah. to it all, yeah. appreciate so, what it was. Yeah. So maybe as broadcasters of journalists, we, we should just refer it to as boxing rather, regardless of sex now, then, isn't it really? So that that's a very good point to, to, to be honest with you, Tom. And, and these are big fights, aren't they? They're not small fights. We've got two cracking fights, uh, which we're going to talk about. But with, with regards to, female boxing do you think we should be seeing three minute rounds now in in in, in the sport now um no no i don't steve and i've got a bit of a strong opinion on this um yeah, go I, on. hit me with it so you know I, I think if you think of other sports you know like think about tennis for example mm -hmm. women's tennis there are there are different a woman's tennis game is different to a man's tennis game in the sense that, you know, you play over different sides, different sets. You play to three sets, you won't play to five. It's never done. Um, there are reasons why women's sport is different to men's. You know, it's not... It, it's it's science that the man's body is different to the woman's body. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's just fact. So mm -hmm. we should be tailoring our sports to to do that, so essentially. Yeah. And you've got to remember... Yeah. We, when it comes and what we're seeing with football, um, and we've seen it for tennis for a long time because women have been allowed to compete in tennis for a long time. Mm -hmm. You don't when you watch tennis, if it's the women, you know you're watching a different. You you know you're not going to see loads of power serves. You're not going to see loads of like um, winners that are like within like a couple of shots. Yeah. But what you do see is you see bet you see better and longer rallies and. Mm -hmm. Over time, you probably see more competitive games as well. Mm -hmm. um, and but I think... wouldn't you say then, if we had a three minute round, we would get more stoppages, then more knockouts in? Yes, there, but you know, as well. there there is. But mm -hmm. why do do we necessarily want that? Do we want mm -hmm. to see that? And this is what this is where I think okay. it's important, Steve, because we're still in a time with women's boxing where the leading woman's fighter, let's say Katie Taylor. Yeah. When she started boxing, she had to pretend she was a boy. Mm -hmm. you know, that's how young we are in this. Yeah, so it's still fairly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the leading fighter, when she started the sport, had yeah. to pretend she was a different sex. Yeah. Now, over time, over time, and I'm talking, you know, we have to be thinking about when the, 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 the prospects that we see in use, they admired the Terry Harpers of the world or the Rhiannon Dixons or the Sandy Ryans. Yeah. Or the when we go down that, and it's going to take years and years, yeah. we might want to revise that where we've got, a. am not necessarily saying the quality of the best women's fighters are there, but the, the strength in depth within the divisions are there. A bigger pool. We're, we're not quite there yeah. yet. We, yeah. fact, we're definitely not there yet because... Yeah. You know, you you see, you see some opponents that Natasha Jonas has been fighting recently, or just like mm -hmm. and not to, just to pick on her, but there's some of the girls that Katie Taylor fights, and she could beat some of these girls with one yeah. hand. Yeah. Um, you know that there, there is yeah. that issue, and I, I I enjoy watching the two minute rounds. I I mm -hmm. enjoy watching. I feel we get better, um, more fast paced fights. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, we don't see knockouts, but. Some of the knockouts we've seen in women's boxing, I, I hear a lot of people get uncomfortable about them. You know, mm -hmm. we see, see Terry, mm -hmm. Terry Harper got knocked out badly, yeah. and there's been mm -hmm. a few, and it's like, well, 
especially when the when the strength in the in depth within the, within the divisions isn't there yet. You do yeah. see some of these women get badly exposed when they're fighting the really good fighters. Fighters, yeah, yeah. I think so, the two minute rounds allows them to survive. Let's say, yeah. let's call it that, or yeah. it allows them to be competitive in these fights. Otherwise, I think we're in a we're in a issue here of actually, if we Damaging force them into the maybe. three minute rounds, yeah. mm. we might actually detract young girls coming into the sport. And I appreciate the amateurs. You know, mm -hmm. they usually fight two minutes anyway, and same with the men when they're coming through at that stage. Mm -hmm. um, at the younger ages, which is fine. But, you know, women's boxing is growing. It's mm -hmm. not broken. I don't see why we're trying to fix yeah. it. What I okay. think we get with, mm -hmm. and there's only a few women that seem to do it. Um, Amanda Serrano has been a big campaigner for three minutes. I think Natasha mm -hmm. Jonas might have said it a few times as well. I And this is natural with sport. And without the better, of a, without the use of a better word, you know, boxing is a very macho sport in the sense it's you know it's full of aggression and you know ego etc so i feel like you get a situation where some of the top women they're like well you know what i want to fight you over three minute rounds it's like an ego thing like i'm you know i'm bet i'll fight you over three you know um and there's some women and i, I credit katie taylor for this who's been like well it's fine as it is with two minutes it's fine minutes. yeah why do we need why yeah. do we need to make women's boxing like men's boxing yeah. let it, right just let it be different like like we have done with tennis and yeah. i think what we've seen over recent years in this country anyway is with women's football is we've started to see that appreciation that the game is different and the women do different things to the men it's not all about pace power and athleticism what mm -hmm. you're seeing in women's football is some of the top players they, they're, they're very creative they do some great skill and you know because that's just what it you know it allowed the, the women's body allows for that you know you're not yeah. going to see in athletics mm -hmm. men and women competing together in athletics boxing is a very athletic sport so why do we need to see them do the same thing i i you know i i don't want to see i don't want to see it to be honest maybe yeah. maybe one day but in a maybe. very long time I will yeah. finish on this though, Steve. Mm -hmm. We currently get two, um, 10 two minute rounds. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm all for moving that to 12 two 12 minutes. 12 two minute rounds, okay. Because, you know, I feel like, although it's only an extra four minutes, I feel like we lose a little bit. Does, and especially some of the women's fights that we've seen over the years, they're great competitive fights. And it's like when they finish at 10, because it's 20 minutes, it's quick. Yeah. You, you oh, want to see a couple more rounds. rounds the championship rounds, we call them that for a reason. Yeah. That's where especially five when, fights are mm -hmm. lost. Yeah, especially when the that. fights are close as well, when we've seen some Absolutely. sort of decision on draws and stuff like that. Those, those extra two rounds could, could make the difference, can't they, I'm guessing. Well, going back to the actual fight itself, Rhiannon Dixon against Terry Harper. Is Harper, would you say, well, well, Dixon's a toughest opponent today, would you say? So that you're saying Harper is Dixon's toughest opponent? It's, it, it's, it's Dixon's, uh, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, would say, I would say so. Um, yeah, I'm at Terry Harper, two-weight world champion. Yeah. Um, fought some really good fights. You know, obviously, she's, she's had up and down form at the top level. You know, one fight, she looks... Um, incredible, and then the next it all kind of unravels for her. Mm -hmm. Um, but she's done it, she's done it at the top level, so yeah, I would definitely say that Harper is Dixon's toughest. Fight today. She's been mm -hmm. Rhiannon Dixon's form over the last two or so years has been quite incredible, really. She's been really impressive, like how mm -hmm. she won the title and the, the couple of fights leading up to that. She's been. She, one of Britain's, well, especially in women's boxing, like form fighters, she's kind of come out of nowhere. Nowhere, yeah, like, made a name for herself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The, the the link up with Anthony Crawler seems to be a match made in heaven for them too. Um, I think she's his first world champion, and you know the the improvement in her boxing since teaming up with Anthony Crawler is it's there for everyone to see. Yeah, I, I agree as well. Harper is now 27. I was quite amazed by that. I thought she's older. Yeah. Uh, but if, yeah. Sorry to Terry Harper. I apologise in advance. Uh, but if she loses this, where, where does she go from here? 
Well, what we've got and what we've got with women, and we've kind of touched upon it, is what because there's a lack of strength in depth. If you are one of the top names in in mm-hmm. most, and you are within those weight divisions, you can move on up and down. And we've seen, you know, someone who we'll get onto later. Well, Terry Harper's done that. Yeah. Michaela May has done that. Mm-hmm. Um, there is Natasha Jones has done that. There is scope for you to go up and down. Ways. So you can. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There will be an opportunity for you. However, what Harper will find, and I think she's found it in this one, mm-hmm. is she'll be the B side in the event. So those fights might not be, you know, to her favor like the other ones were. Where yeah. you know she's a. She was although the this mm-hmm. is a close fight. Uh, I think this will be a close competitive fight, but you know, especially you can see it in the betting. Rhiannon Dixon is the favourite in this. Um, Terry mm-hmm. Harper is expected to, you know, lose gallantly, let's say. But mm-hmm. yeah, so that's the yeah. problem that Harper will find. Sure. Talking about you mentioned Sandy Ryan, Sandy Ryan, and the the Harper fight. How much did that take out of Harper physically and and, and mentally? Would would you say that fight? Well, I think we'll have to wait until Saturday to really, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, yeah, it, it to see the way you can see, yeah, yeah. Um, but it, well, I, I was actually there that night, and it was a shocking, yeah. It was really emphatic from the get-go how, mm-hmm. um, you know, Sandy Ryan just demolished her. Um, Relentless, and, wasn't that? Yeah, mm-hmm. that was another one of those fights where, all right, Ryan was the champion, Hop was the B-side, but. And I expected Ryan to win that fight, but not in that fashion. That was yeah. really yeah. emphatic, and she got hurt. And yeah, it it was re- mentally that is without doubt coming off a knockout like that in a fight which that was not expected to happen to you. It, it's going to take something out of her. She can take comfort that you know she's bounced back from this in the past with Baumgartner. It was yeah. you know that knockout. Funny enough. That was in she- I think that was in Sheffield as well. So she was <laughs> yeah, I mean she's a Donny girl, um Terry yeah. Hart. Mm-hmm. She's only down the road, but she doesn't seem to like fighting in Sheffield. Though. Sheffield, yeah. Yeah, mm. it's a bad bad sight bad for her. Side. But, um, is that is that a bad omen already then? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, she has come back from this before. And what she can also take comfort in is this is clearly closer to, if not her natural weight. Yeah. Um she she was a big super feather when she was a featherweight. When, when she was a champion at that weight, um, she moved up to obviously light middle um, and had success there, but it became clear that she was too small for that weight. And when she was fighting Sandy Ryan, I think she can take a little bit of comfort. I'm not saying much, but she was fighting Sandy Ryan at her natural weight. Now, mm-hmm. Terry Harper probably should be fighting around the lightweight, super lightweight division. She's kind of gone up and down. That's right. And you're yeah. now in the middle now. So I'm I'm guess I'm sure she's using that as some kind of inspiration um, sure. as to why she'll perform better um this time than she has done in the past. But yeah, we have to we have to wait until wait to yeah. And, yeah. until to see. Yeah, yeah. until the fight. Sure. One knockout on Dixon's record. She's not much of a puncher, but what, what does she offer? So. Yeah, so I, I think we've obviously, you know, we can we can get lost in the in the women's knockout um ratios, etc. It, it might look like she's not a puncher. I'm not saying she's a massive banger, yeah. but I think we have seen over the last few fights her power has been improving under um Anthony Crawler. She got her first stoppage when she challenged for the Commonwealth title. She also dropped is it Carabal? I think you got I think her how you Carabal, the um the fighter she beat for the world title. Mm-hmm. And I, I was there when Katie Ta- Taylor beat Carabal and she Katie Taylor Katie Taylor never looked like knocking her down. Knocking her down and, yeah. mm-hmm. Um Rhiannon Dixon did. So that you could take you could look at that and think, all right, she's getting there. You know, obviously we've been two minute rounds there's that to take into it as well. You know, you're mm-hmm. not seeing them as much, but I think her power has been improving quite recently. Her, she's got quite a a loose style, um, southpaw. She likes to when she she does throw a lot of single shots, uh, like well balanced, a bit off the back foot, trying to catch them coming in. Yeah. Um. So 
that she has that kind of style where unless she really explodes into the shot mm-hmm. or, or really puts everything in, it's going to be hard for her to chip away at opponents. But, sure. you know, she can also think, well, you know, Terry Harper doesn't like, and she's shown in a few of her fights, not just the ones where she's been knocked out. When Terry Harper takes a shot, she kind of does that thing that AJ does where they kind of freeze um, Free, in that yeah. little moment. They're like, oh, like, yeah. it's like a mental block. You see some fighters, um, you know, for example, Tyson Fury, for example, they kind they, they kind of accept that, you know, they might get dropped and, you know, they're willing to just, you know, yeah. go go to that place um, and they accept that's what's going to happen at some time. But With when they, Terry Harper... Yeah. You feel it coming, yeah. Yeah, they're like they're that kind of freeze and tense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's it's going to be interesting to see whether Rhiannon Dixon can hurt Terry Harper, mm-hmm. um, and how they both decide to go about it based on that. I was going to move on to that. How do you see the fight going, or will you pretty much describe? Yeah, I mean, like this is a really. I think this is a really tough one to call. You can see why the bookies have Rhiannon Dixon as favourite. She, Mm -hmm. out of the two, is without doubt in the better form. Um, And we've seen that in the last few fights where she's, um, you know, she she won the Commonwealth, knocked out her opponent on good there. She beat Katarina Fanders, who is the the only two people that beat her, Rhiannon Dixon and um, Terry Harper. Like, she only gets beat by good girls. That was a good win for her. And then with beating... Carabao, which you could argue in a better fashion than, you know, maybe Katie Taylor did. So mm-hmm. she's in great form. However, you could then say with Terry Harper that, you know, she, she'll she feel a lot more comfortable fighting Rhiannon Dixon at lightweight mm-hmm. than she would at Sandy Ryan at um, welterweight. You know, yeah. t- this would, and we talked about this, mm-hmm. this is... Rhiannon Dixon's toughest fight and Terry Harper can take comfort in that, that she's been at that higher level for longer, really, and yeah. had success there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's all depending on, you know, um, what we get. Well, does Rhiannon Dixon continue to improve under Crawler and does Terry Harper continue to decline? Like at 27, yeah. it's yeah. an interesting one. What, sure. what, what does need to be mentioned is Rhiannon Dixon is Southpaw. And mm-hmm. if you look back at one of um, Terry Harper's less impressive performances, it was against Natasha Jonas, also a Southpaw. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She struggled with her that night. Mm-hmm. So that's something to look at. Yeah, to take yeah. yeah, sure. Okay, prediction time then. Tom, what's your prediction for the fight? This... And I think I've got, I think every time I've been on the show, I could be wrong. I guess I've got the Boazzi Go one on. right. And I think yeah. I've got the one after, before that right. So th- this is a really tough one, I think. And it's because mm. there's a lot of unknowns. We don't know how good Rhiannon Dixon really is, if she can continue. Mm. The smart money would probably be on Rhiannon Dixon to win on points. Yeah. Um, but... Terry Harper, she's a Yorkshire lass, um, and I'm going to back my girl. So I I wouldn't be surprised if this is wrong, but I'm going to go for, and I'm not really basing this on much, I'm basing it on the unknown, that Terry Harper recovers well. She prefers <laughs> fighting at lightweight. Mm-hmm. She's got more experience at this level, and maybe Rhiannon Dixon's just taking her a bit lightly. And like I said, she's got everything to lose in this fight, Terry Harper. Rhiannon Dixon really hasn't. Uh, obviously, she's a world champion. She'll lose her world title. Yeah, but sure. she will be able to come back from this. Mm-hmm. Terry Harper might have that, you know, just like, right, this is it now. I've, you know, my future lies in this fight. And, you know, I've just got to back my Yorkshire lass. So okay. that's what I'm doing. Up on points then? I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, let's let's say points. <laughs> Contra- um, let's say split decision. Oh, close then. Yeah, close. Yeah, no, I, th- I think it will. I think, mm-hmm. and we'll talk about this on the next one. Mm-hmm. I'll be yeah. interested to see what, um, how this fight really goes in terms of how the actual action and the rhythm goes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Is it I, interesting? I think both have success. It's, mm-hmm. it's a close fight. It's a close fight. Yeah. Let's not sleep on terror. 
Sure. sure. Okay, moving on to Sandy Ryan uh, against um, uh, Michaela Mayer now. Do you think you could beat Sandy Ryan in the arm wrestle? Well, I'm absolutely shocking at arm wrestle. <laughs> Are you? Yeah, so I, I'm left-handed. Okay. So obviously, most people are so, right-handed. So, so yeah. the thing is... You may have a bit of advantage. Yeah. Adam? You may have a bit of advantage there, maybe. Well, you say that. <laughs> Let me finish to explain why. So <laughs> people beat me right-handed, and then mm -hmm. I say, "Well, I'm left-handed anyway, so what are you can do." It doesn't matter. Yeah. And then I say, "Go on, then go with your left," and I lose that as well. So mm -hmm. it's not it's not a skill of mine. I've got to admit, arm wrestling is not a skill of mine. <laughs> yeah. Sandy Ryan all day. San yeah. Sandy Ryan scares me a little bit. Really? Honest. Yeah, she's scared yeah, me she's as well. I did fire in her hand, she, So yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm I did. I did so. put something on Twitter once saying that I, I think Sandy Ryan, Ryan could beat me in the arm wrestle. So if she's out there, I'm still up for the challenge. I, I think I can win, maybe. So, but I'm not 100 percent confident. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to back. Yeah, not, yeah, not my. If, if it's out there, if you're watching Sandy, the offer's still there. But obviously, <laughs> we keep it a sportsman bet. Looking back to Maya, would you say she's unlucky not to be a, a world champion already with the fights against uh, Jonas and Bangardner? So I'm guessing. You mean world champion still? Yeah, world she, champion, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Michaela May is an interesting one because I always feel like she she had that fight with Hamadouche, which was like a fight of the year contender. And I feel like mm -hmm. she's just decided that every fight now she wants to fight that way. Yeah. I don't think she actually uses her skill and her size because she's quite tall um, and her wingspan to her advantage. She, she fights like a shorter fighter. Yeah. Um, but... You know, she's lost to Baumgartner. She's lost to Natasha Jonas. I think she won both those fights. Yeah, that's for now. Um, mm -hmm. I think, I think she beat. It was very close against Baumgartner. I mean, like you, I, it wasn't a robbery, but I felt genuinely sorry for May. I was like, I think you got the better of it there, and yeah. obviously in such a big fight when there was such a heated rivalry there, that was obviously a tough pill to swallow. But I thought she quite comfortably, and I, I. I had a bet on it as well. I was a bit gutted because I backed Maya to Maya to beat Natasha Jones. I should be all wrong yeah. for it. Mm. I think that proved the case. Natasha Jones was very lucky to win that night. Yeah. So yeah. very much make, make an art if you think about it. Mm. Maya, if on another day she'd be undisputed super weatherweight title, um, and she'd be unified welter. She'd yeah. be she could she could if she if it had gone another way, she could call herself one of those real top names at the sport. She could be arguing yeah. with Katie Taylor and um, Clarissa Shields that Shields she is the number one. Yeah. But un unfortunately, it's just not happened for her. Yeah, she's just been a bit unlucky on the, the wrong end of decisions there, hasn't she, really? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. Do, do you think Ryan has learned a lesson from that SD loss against uh, Farris? Oh, absolutely. She, loves, mm. she even looks different. Yeah. I mean, I remember, I remember before that fight, you could see you know, I hope she doesn't see this. Like I said, she'd be even an <laughs> She told me, but she had like she had quite a bit of a chubby face. Okay. And then you just saw in the rematch, she just looked different. Like Better. her physique yeah. was completely, mm. you could tell. And she I think she said it in a few interviews. She was like, this is me taking the sport serious now. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly what if you are going to lose, and most fighters do, that's the kind of reaction you want you from want back. Yeah. Right? because they always say, don't they? You know, you know, once you've lost, you've unbeaten record that's when you know you should really be learning mm -hmm. and you know it should make you a better fighter for some fighters it does it, and it all depends on what your you know what your mindset is and what you really want out for the sport you know you can when fighters are building up etc they can get away with if if they've got a good amount of skill they can be a bit of a pretender you know if they're not if they're cutting corners they don't think it's going to happen and then it does and then it's all about how do you um cope from that and we talk about informed fighters sandy ryan is just that you know she's also another one who's very unlucky not to be um she have all the belts at um, well away mm -hmm. before she beat mccaskill out in america she's going to be hoping for better luck um and from the judges in, um, in, america, out in america again uh, because, I've got to get to that. yeah i've got a question yeah. on that. uh will mayor be Ryan's toughest fight today, do you think? I know I asked um, a similar question to this, yeah, this is a, I think this is a bit I think this is a bit tougher. 
Uh-huh. I think this is a bit tougher to answer. You could argue no, but okay. I think you know you could argue maybe McCaskill or what you uh-huh. could argue. Well, I think what based on what we've just said about the, mm. the the girl she lost to, you can argue that her biggest test in her career was going mm. in that immediate rematch with her, going into that fight with a person who just beat you and beat you well. Yeah, knowing that your career on the line, you can argue that Sandy Wright. It's it's easy street to an extent because she's overcome that mental demon. Yeah. Um, and, you know, even though it's not the biggest name on her record, you could argue that that is her biggest test. But, yeah. you know, usually when we talk about these kind of things, we're talking about, you know, the biggest name on your record, etc. cetera. Um, I, I, I personally think Mayer is a better fighter. Yeah. Um, pound for pound mm-hmm. than McCaskill ever was. She was very good at what she did, but Mayer is a better fighter. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I, w- I would say it is. It's, this is a really big fight, I think, for women's boxing. Yeah, it, yeah it's massive. Real yeah, I, I agree. It's kind mm-hmm. of. I think if in this was England, it'd be a bit different. I feel like it's maybe it's because we're in England. I think it's going yeah. under the radar a bit. Yeah, yeah, really. I agree. I think it's a massive fight as well. You touched on this just a minute ago. Being in New York, will Ryan be confident enough to let this go to the cars? Do you think, or do you think she'd be looking for a stoppage? Um. I, th- I think it's almost inevitable. Um, well, not inevitable. Ryan could stop Mayer. This is, like I say, this is her range. She's shown she's shown she had, does have power at the way, Sandy Ryan. Um, but I don't think she'd be going out there specifically looking for the knockout. I think she'll yeah. be fighting to a specific game plan. And whether the knockout comes, um, it will come. Um, I don't yeah. think she's going to be she, looking. Because what? if she does... He's a, if he's if she risker. sees it, she'll go for it, do you think? Then? Yeah, and you know, most fighters will do that, won't they? But um, I don't think she's going to be like, right, I need to knock I her need out. To knock out. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. She, she's fairly confident. If it does go to the cards and she, you know, thinks she's won the fight, then she should be in safe hands, basically. Do you think? Well, as much as anyone can really say <laughs> yeah. that, I mean, like, you That's know. That's a silly question, isn't it? Really? It, it is a piece of boxing, isn't it? Especially, you know, with. Yeah. Both of these girls have seen in the past, you know, mm. um, how bad judging, judges, yeah, like, yeah. And especially that's... Michaela Mayer, yeah. who I actually feel glad for her that she's actually on a home show for a change because she always yeah. seems. The last few fights, she's been fighting away and not getting the right. Yeah, anything right. you know, she deserves the fact that she's back on a top rank show. Yeah, um, at the Madison Square Garden Theatre. Hopefully, there's a good crowd, and I hope you know what I hope. I hope there's good atmosphere for Mayer because you know she deserves it. She's a she tough it. fighter and she's yeah. had to go away from home to get Absolutely. those big opportunities. Absolutely. How do you see the fight going, Tom? Um so speaking about Terry Harper and Ryan Dixon and not being that sure about how that's gonna go, I feel a lot more confident that you can what you can expect from Sandy okay. Ryan and Michaela yeah. Mayer. Michaela mm-hmm. Mayer, like like I mentioned, has just decided now that every fight she wants to have is, you know, it's come forward, it's get on the inside and try and outwork your opponent. She loves to throw that uppercut, you know, and that right hook, etc. Um so I, I I think Mayer is going to come out and try and put it on Sandy Ryan. Um Sandy as well, she she she's happy to go to that place if she needs to, and she's a very good boxer fighter. Um both of these girls have very good amateur pedigree. Um, you know, Mayer went to the Olympics for the US and Sandy Ryan had a very good um, GB career. So I'm expecting to see a quite uh, a high level brawl, um, mm-hmm. high level brawl. I think we're going to see both girls have their moments and it's going to be a real battle of attrition, but it's not going to be, it's not going to be ugly. It's going to, it's, it's going to, I think it's going to be a really good fight this. Right. Sure. Okay. Put you on the spot now. Prediction time. Who's going to win? Well, yeah, I I had a look at the betting before this to yeah, see because I was thinking to myself, I've got I wonder whether Sandy Ryan's a big favourite for this, and I actually think this is a really close fight. Mm-hmm. And when I check the odds, they li- it's literally 50 oh, wow. 50. Sandy, Sandy Ryan is the slightest favourite, and I mean slightly odds on, so it's basically a 50 50. Mm. Um, what is interesting, and it's we talk about Terry Harper being surprised that she's 27. Michaela May is 34. 
Yeah. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see whether she can keep going to the well and putting out, yeah. turning out these big performances, these high octane, mm-hmm. big punch output fights. Except she throws lots of punches, always throws, she's always trying to outwork her opponent. Mm-hmm. Um, Sandy Ryan, a little less so, but her, she wants again, she wants to get busy and, you know, put it, stick it on you. Um, I. I can't say this is a really. T- I wouldn't be surprised if we get another draw. I really wouldn't. Yeah. Okay. The draw is very much in play here. I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna go. For, see, I'm I'm changing. I'm changing my mind. <laughs> changing my mind. I want to say I feel like Michaela Mayer has got one more in her. Mm, and she might be lucky yeah. to get this one. Yeah. But she deserves a bit of luck. Yeah. You can't have like three split decisions in a row against you, can you? Really? Yeah, sure not. <laughs> uh, part of me, t- part of me yeah. says, you know, probably she's going to get the rub of the yeah. green this time. However, yeah. I also can't not look at Sandy Ryan be a fresher fighter. Yeah, she's in she's great form as well. Yeah, that's what you've got to look at. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know what? Mm-hmm. I'm going to sit on the fence, but also not sit on the fence by saying it. I'm gonna go for another draw. Draw. Wow, that's a big shout, Tom. If it happens, well, yeah, it's gonna yeah, it's gonna be really close either way. Yeah. I, I, I can see either girl winning, but it'll be really close. I'm it'll be one two rounds in it. I reckon. I'll be really surprised if it's if someone's like really takes it home. That'll yeah. really surprise me. Like wide margin. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Always end the show with a couple quick ending questions for you, Tom. I'll put this one out on Twitter over, over a week ago and had a massive response. Are UK cards being neglected due to the sort of Saudi rehab season? Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting time to ask that because you know what we what we, we do kind of have that end of season thing with British boxing where there is usually that time, but that's kind of come a little bit early this year. Thinking about it, usually yeah. that's a bit more like you know there's a break around Christmas. Mm-hmm. And usually there's like a little bit of a break, I think, around this time of the Jan year. as well, isn't there? Sometimes a bit yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But I, yeah, I, I, I do, I do worry about it. And to be honest, this was all I feel like this was always going to this was going to be a byproduct of it. Like, we can't, you can't have it all. Like, oh. you, got, mm-hmm. you know, if I know you can argue that you know, the, the card the other night that those fights wouldn't happen because of Riyadh season. But if you look mm-hmm. at that card, except for, let's say, Mark Chamberlain versus Josh Padler, mm-hmm. they're all main event fights. Like, they, yeah. they could have been a main event if, you know, on yeah. the right card. So, essentially, you've lost, you could say you've lost five shows five there. Shows, so that's yeah. your main event. They've mm-hmm. all got on one. And mm-hmm. we've got a few coming up. You know, one thing that really disappoints me is... Mm-hmm. Um, Fabio Wardley and Fraser Clark not being in British. Um, yeah, time. loads of people were disappointed with that. Uh, all exactly. British and that, that, clash for a title, British class title, and then they have it in Saudi. So and that's a perfect example of what the issue is right now. Mm-hmm. You, we've got good fights which should be in this country, you know, headlining shows or main support or whatever, and they'll they just end up being like midway down yeah. on a Saudi bill. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure the lads are happy about that. I'm sure they're getting paid way more. Yeah. But this yeah. is what everyone's looking for, isn't it? They're looking for that money. Saudi money and they're holding yeah. out for it. Exactly. That's what it comes yeah. down to. The money at the end of the day, the, the prize fighters, they get paid to fight. Why not? Don't blame them. But maybe the fans are being a bit neglected to to UK shows anyway, seeing these fights in the UK. Just another quick one. Quick prediction. A couple of weeks away. Better be air versus Bivil. Who who wins, Tom? Yeah, I'll keep this fairly quick. So I, think, I think we actually <laughs> talked about this on the last time I was oh, on. Did we? Okay. Was, well, yeah, because it was the light heavyweight. It was Buatsi versus Aziz. And okay. I think we talked about Bivil. Better be air then. Okay. Have you changed your mind have, since? Well, I ha- I have actually, yeah, and oh, because at the time mm-hmm. uh, I was thinking Better be air because you mm-hmm. know he's on a great run of form. You know, you had the Callum Smith performance. He looked, you know, dynamite, but. The injuries, he, yeah. he's, he's, I think he's 40 now, and they're serious injuries as well. We're not talking about little niggles here and there. Serious injuries, um, that's got to take a toll on your body. Mm-hmm. Um, Bivol, we saw him recently on one of the Saudi bills. I was impressed with him. Mm-hmm. Um, it was always going to be a tough fight 
anyway, um, like a close fight, they're both going to have success. They're both real top quality operators, you know. But for me now, just form and fitness um, and, you know, the age. Age, yeah. Uh, I've changed my mind now. I yeah. think Bev will win on points. Funny enough, Tom, I'm, I'm kind of with you as well. With you as well. Always thinking better be a better be a, He's going to win. He's going to win. And then since the injuries, like I said, he's getting more injury prone. I'm kind of thinking the same, to be honest with you, Tom. I've yeah. changed my mind as well since all that anyway. So, yeah, it's, it's amazing. But obviously got a couple of weeks away for that one to to wait for that one. So, but we, we shall yeah. see. <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised, like say, caveat again, because this is top level boxing. Mm. You can't say for sure. No. Maybe a bit. Better be Ev could, you know, like another performance like he did against Cal Smith. If he, if he fights yeah. like that again, then, you know. Yeah, no exactly. Yeah, yeah, I've just tipped it, tipped mm. it to be well now. Sure, sure. Well, that's it for another show. Uh, thanks for joining me, Tom. Really appreciate your thoughts and feedback on the fights there. Obviously, please, everyone, support the channel your best you can with likes, comments and subscriptions. And, and enjoy the fights on, on Friday and Saturday. So, thanks, Tom. Nice one, Steve. Thank you. Thank you.